Hello, and welcome to ITC TechShare. I'm Tom Grissom. In this edition, I will share with you the basics of using the Smart Notebook version 10 software. On the desktop, I have an icon here, so if I double-click, that will take me to the Smart Notebook software. Now we have a row of tools across the top, and let me just very quickly go over what each one of these go from the left to the right. The left arrow key will zoom your back arrow. Right arrow will take you forward one slide. The new page button, if you do a mouse over, it will tell you, give you a little annotation there of what each one of these icons is. The open file, so that's a shortcut. Instead of going up to file and open, you can simply click on the folder icon. Same thing with the save icon, which is a diskette. You can click on file, save, or save as, or simply click on the save button. The paste button, the undo button, the redo button, the X delete. Now you'll notice these are all grayed out, which means we can't select them because we don't have anything on our, our smart notebook screen. So let me just choose the pen here, choose a blue color. And if I write something, now you'll see that the undo button is highlighted, so I can undo that, or I can redo it. And if I select it using the mouse here, this is my selection, uh, my select feature. So if I click on the item, you'll notice the red X is now available, and I can delete it. The shade feature, again, let me just put something out here. We have the shade feature here, and you'll notice we have pull down menus here so you this is used for like if you're trying to present sequential text so like step one step two step three and so forth you also have you can bring it from the left to the right these little indentations right here or from the right to the left or from the bottom to the top so you have four ways that you can move that whenever you're finished using the shade feature you can click the red X and it goes away this icon here is the full screen with the arrows pointing out toward the corners of the screen. That will make your uh, smart notebook software go into full screen mode. So here we are. Now the entire board becomes the, uh, the whiteboard, and we can use our forward and back arrows. And then this symbol, we have a floating toolbar. Notice I've lost all my tools whenever I do this. Uh, but if I want to go back to where I was, I can say exit full screen. The, here's the monitor with the arrows pointing inward. So if I click on that, that takes me back to my, my tool view here. The transparent mode. Now let me select this item right here, and I'm going to delete it. Before I, can use, before I showed you how to use the red X, but you can also use this little triangle here to select many different options, and one of those options is delete, or as you can see, the shortcut is just to simply press the delete key on the keyboard. The transparent background, uh, this can be used uh, to show you what's behind your smart notebook software. And this, this has some, some good possibilities out there whenever you're trying to demonstrate something. If I click on the transparent mode, so you see my desktop here in this case. Let me go ahead and open up a web browser here. And here is the ITC web page. And what I was just sharing with you, all of the different tools on the ITC homepage at eiu.edu slash ITC, we have uh, several documents out there to help you get started with smart boards. One of them is called Explanations of the Smart Notebook Icons. So I can click here. Now if you notice, because we are in Smart Notebook Transparency, I've got another floating toolbar here, and I've got different tools. So for example, if I want to show you how to create or insert a new blank page, I can choose my pen tool here, and I can actually write on top. Now whenever I do that, I'm writing the, on the transparent background of the smart board, so if I go back to say stop showing me or exit the transparent background, I, there's my circle that I just drew right here. Now that item is actually in as part of the smart notebook page, so let me grab the eraser tool here and erase that out of here. So this may have some uses out there, go to transparency mode, Let's go back to the ITC page. And we also have some other functions here. We have a few of the features, but one of them that may be helpful when you're in transparent mode is to use the capture tool, the screen capture tool. So I'm going to click on that, and another floating toolbar pops up. And it says that I could select an area. So let's say that I want to get a picture of the Tech Talk for Teachers logo over here for my podcast. So I will just draw a box around there and it pops up the actual item. Now whenever I exit transparent mode, that becomes an object on the Smart Notebook page. 
Because it's an object, I can make it smaller or larger. This little green symbol, I can rotate it left or to the right. And then whenever I'm finished, I can delete it. And if I did not want to delete it, I could undo that last action. And therefore, we can make it reappear. So let me bring this back here a little bit straight. All right. So we still have our capture icon or floating toolbar here open. So let me close that out of here. Now then, we've talked about transparent background. Now this next one is dual screen. For me to show you the dual screen, let me go out here and say this is page number one. Then I'm going to create a new page. And here is page number two. So you can see in my page sorter here, page one, page two. And if I show you in dual screen, side by side, there's page one and there's page two. To get back to single page mode, click the icon and it toggles you back into that. The screen capture tool we just talked about, if you have a smart document camera, you can actually go out and connect a document camera and just very simply click on that icon and show whatever is on the document camera. I don't on this particular computer, so I'll just X that out. And let's make a new page here. So here's page three. Grab this, let's choose red here. So here's page three. And here is the table function. This says insert a table, so you can click, hold, and drag however many rows and columns that you want. And whenever you're finished, you can let off. And you have a very quick way to make a table. Let's delete this item here. Since it's selected, I'll click the X. You also have the pen tool, which I've been using. Change your colors, whatever color, black, blue, red, green, dotted line. You can highlight, so if I want to highlight an item, I can choose the highlight tool. Uh, if I don't want that, I can hit undo. You also have a creative marker tool, creative pins, so you have these different objects. So let's say I wanted to draw stars, or you could come up here and select happy face in whatever you draw. And then you have the eraser tool, a small, a medium, and a large size. Uh, usually when I use the eraser, I use large because I usually mess up pretty big, so I want to be able to erase something very quickly. So you just go around there and erase whatever you had. The line tool, so let's draw a straight line, large red line. Once you have that line selected, you can move that around wherever you want. The shape tool, so let's say that we wanted to draw a square, so I could select the square tool right here. Or let's say that I wanted to draw a triangle, you just click, hold, and drag, and you can make it whatever size, shape, change the angle, whatever you'd like to do. Now, this tool here is called the shape recognition tool. If I go out and draw, let's say I draw a circle here, freehand. I'm not very good at drawing a circle. That looks somewhat like a circle, but if I use my shape recognition tool whenever I draw that circle, it takes whatever I drew and makes it into a perfect circle. So there's a perfect circle. Let's try a square. So it just helps make things a little bit neater. The magic pen tool. This is a, a neat feature. It's got three modes, basically. If I start writing something, I can say, okay, class, let's look at the square right here. So let me draw an arrow here, draw an arrow here. And after 10 seconds, the ink will start to disappear. You can see it disappearing there. All right, so that's really good for annotations that you want to do. Uh, it also has two other modes. Once I'm in the magic pen mode, if I draw a circle around something, again, try drawing it close, it puts me into spotlight mode. All right. Now, this is very, very good if you want to focus somebody's attention on whatever particular thing. We're learning about triangles or the number three, whatever it may be, or a circle. And you can really direct someone's attention here in spotlight mode. To get rid of it, just click the red X. The third function of the Magic Pen tool is uh, zoom in capability. So if you draw a, a square, something with right angles, a square or a rectangle around something, while you have the Magic Pen selected, it will zoom in on that particular object. You zoom in even further by moving the mouse. So click the red X whenever we're done. Now that only works whenever you have the magic pen tool selected. Many times you won't find the magic pen up here in the, in the uh, smart board tray. So you may need to go to the draw menu and it's always available there. And you'll see the shortcut is the control key and the nine key together. So that's a magic pen tool. The paint bucket tool, this is for filling uh, different things. So we can come out here and choose our different fill effects whenever I go into that. So I can choose, uh, let's choose, let's choose this square here, for example, and then choose red. 
or green or blue, whatever color we would like to do. Our text tool, you choose different styles and different things. So let me choose this. And whenever I start writing, I can go out there and write whatever I'd like just by typing on the keyboard. This is the properties function here. If I click on this key or this little icon, this essentially is a shortcut. If you notice over here, I've got the page sorter view. I've got what they call the gallery, uh, the link button, and then right here's the properties. So I can select an object, go to the properties and change different colors. That's where I was just showing you there. And then you also have some measurement tools out there. Uh, might be helpful for math teachers out there and say that you want to use a ruler to, to measure something so we can pick this up and move this around. Uh, since this is an object, I can grab the corner and make it larger or smaller. Uh, click on this again, move this around. You can anchor it. So if you wanted to measure something, you can move that around. So the students can manip manipulate that uh, whatever way they would like. Okay, this page is getting busy. So let me go back to page sorter view. Over here on the left-hand tab, I'm gonna click back. So now we have page one. And by changing, clicking on it, you'll change the pages and page two and page three. Just like PowerPoint, if you don't like that order, you can click, hold, and drag and rearrange those one, three, two. Let's put them back in the proper order. So that's the basics of the smart board there. Let's go back to page one. And that concludes the basics of using the tools. In the next episode, I will discuss a little bit more about the Gallery Essentials and the Lesson Activity Toolkit. Until next time, this is Tom Grissom. Keep on learning.